In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the Black Shoals option pricing model and how we can use it to calculate the price of a call option or a put option using Excel. And although it looks pretty convoluted at first, I'll admit, it's not too complicated. So all we really need to start with is five inputs. So we need the price of the underlying stock. And I'm going to be using the values that John Hull uses in his famous uh, derivatives book. So uh, $42 for our underlying stock price right now. So we could buy that stock at $42 right now. The strike price will be 40. What that means is if I own the call option, I have the right to buy this price or the buy the underlying stock for $40 at the time that this stock expires. Or if I had to put, I could sell it for $40. The time to expiration will use 0.5. So that means that this option expires um, a half a year into the future, so about six months. And that's when I'll have to either exercise or not exercise the option. For our risk free rate, we'll go with uh, 10%. And for our volatility, we'll go with 20%. Now we're going to have to calculate D1 and D2. After we calculate that, I'll break down what they mean in the context of pricing the call and the put. So it's going to be easier for us to see what we're typing if we give all these the names of the cells to the left of them. And that's really easy. I'm just going to right click to find name. Excel already knows we want to call this S because it's next to it. So I'll just do that for all the rest of them. That's K. This one is T. And this one is R. And this one will be the volatility symbol. Perfect. Now let's calculate the value of D1, which we can find in this formula here. And so let's start off with equal to uh, parenthesis. So now we'll just be finding the natural logarithm of the underlying price divided by the strike price plus the risk-free rate plus the volatility squared, which was actually the standard deviation divided by two and then we will just multiply all of that by the time to expiration and if i close that we now have the numerator of this equation and then we can just divide all of this by the volatility multiplied by the time to expiration squared or actually to the 0.5 because we're taking the square root and if you put um to the exponent of 0.5, it's the same thing as doing the square root. This should give us D1, and that is perfect. So this is our D1 value. Now, uh, uh, D2 is really easy to find once we have D1. It's just this right here. So we can do equal to D1 minus, and then we'll just be taking the volatility again and multiplying it by T to the 0.5. And there we have D2. Let's give these names just like we did the rest of them so it's easier to price out the call option and the put option. So that's D1, and this will be D2. Now that we have D1 and D2, let's go over what they mean in the context of pricing these calls and puts. So this top formula here is the formula to price the call. So this ND1 gives us the theoretical probability that the call option will be exercised or in the money at expiration. And we can multiply that probability by the underlying price um, S to find out the expected value of the stock if the option is exercised. And then this second component that we subtract here gives us the strike price discounted back to the value of today using continuous compounding, uh, multiplied by the uh, probability that the call option will be in the money at the expiration date. So let's just go ahead and write that out. So it'll be equal to, and that's going to be S multiplied by, and then for this N here, we'll use norm.dist. So this returns the normal distribution for the uh, a specified mean and standard deviation. So we're going to take for this X here is just going to be D1. And then we'll do comma and the mean will be zero and standard deviation will be one. And this is how it is for all standard uh, distribution bell curves, right? So then we'll hit true there and close that. And then now we will subtract out this component of the formula, which is going to be equal to 
the strike price multiplied by E, which is just EXP. And now we put it to negative risk-free rate multiplied by time. And then finally, we can multiply by the norm.dist formula one more time. Now it wants D2, so let's put D2 in there. Let's do comma, zero for mean, one for standard deviation, just like before, and put true. And now this should give us the value of the call option, which is going to be equal to $4.76. Now let's price a put option using this formula here. And let's break it down really into two components. So this side right here is basically the benefit that we get. And so let's talk about what this is right here. So K is the strike price. So if I'm selling this put option in the future, I'm selling it for $40. This E to the negative RT is just discounting that $40 back to the price today based on a time period of 0.5 years and a risk-free rate of 10%. So this is just giving me my present value of my future cash flow. And then we're going to multiply it by n, n negative d2, which is really the weighted probability of this event occurring that I receive this benefit. And now we subtract by what would essentially be our cost, which is the price of the underlying stock that we're having to sell, multiplied by nd1, which is the probability that the investor will exercise the option. And so let's just price this out. So we're going to say equal to the strike price multiplied by E, which is actually EXP in Excel, negative, and that is going to be the risk-free rate, multiplied by the time to expiration, and we can close that. So that discounts our, um, our strike price back to today, and multiplied by, we'll do N negative D2, which is that norm dist function. X is now going to be negative D2, mean is zero, standard deviation is one, just like before, and true because it's a cumulative distribution function. Now we will subtract this component, which is just the underlying strike price, times n negative D1, which is that norm dot dist, x is negative D1, like I said, mean is zero, standard deviation is one, and once again, we'll do true, and that should wrap it up for us. So, yep, our put option should be 81 cents. So there we go. We've priced the call on the put option. Now, let's just change a few things real quick just so we can see the implications of what all of this means. Um, let's say our underlying strike price was, or sorry, our underlying stock price was actually lower. So if this was lower, we should see the price of the call fall, but see the price of the put rise. So let's set this to 39. So now our call options price dropped to 268 but our put options price was uh 81 cents and now it's 173. um an interesting thing that we should see is that the price of both should increase if we increase the volatility because for both someone who owns a call and a put the having higher volatility is better so let's change that from 0.2 to 0.3 and we see both of those prices actually rise so that's uh, quite interesting. And, you know, we can say the same thing about timed expiration, typically. The more uh, time there is to expiration, the more of uh, uh, time there is for the option to move further into the money in our favor. So we should see both these values increase if I increase the time to expiration to, say, let's say two years. See, they both have increased. So there's a lot of interesting implications about the, uh, the Black Shoals Merton pricing model. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more content like this and you can use the link in the description to uh to download the file that I created here. Thank you for watching.